here we have a question where we could use a spreadsheet to solve this, but it's going to be quite difficult to do that because our compounding is quarterly, but our payments are every other month. So the time skills don't match there. So that is a perfect opportunity to use the TVM solver, which is set up to handle that much more easily than a spreadsheet. So what you want to do is use your TVM solver and let's look at what we need to put in here. So first we want to put in our present value of zero because Fen is setting up an investment account when she's 18 years old and she's going to start with no money in there. I should mention that there are two different accounts here, but right here in the question we're going to split. So we're going to first work out what happens in the first account and then we're going to take that amount and put it into the second account. So our future value is going to be left blank. That's what we're going to be solving for. I'm going to leave periods blank just briefly and we'll come back and talk about that because there's a little bit of a complication there. So we're going to do that last. So let's first look at the easiest one, which is our interest rate on this first account is 6.5%. And our payment amount is $700. Notice that I use a negative sign here because this money is coming out of Fen's pocket and going into an investment account. That's when you want to use a negative sign when you're putting money out of your pocket and into the bank. Payments per year, every other month, that means six times per year. Our compounding is quarterly, so that's going to be four compounds per year. And our periods, so she runs this account for 15 years. And what you need to understand about using the WCLN TVM solver, which is the one you should be using in this course, is that the periods are tied to the payments per year. Now, other financial calculators online may tie to the compounding per year. So anytime you use a financial calculator, make sure you understand which of those matters. In this case, it's the payments per year. So we're going to do six payments per year multiplied by 15 years. That means a total of 90 periods pass in this first account. So we'll put that into TVM and we'll hit our question mark. And her final value at the end of this amount of time, these 15 years, is the $105,637.56. Okay, so what does Fen do? Fen is going to take all of that money from this investment and put it into a different account. So we're going to need a new blank TVM, and we're going to have a present value which is essentially a copy from the future value of over before. Notice that this is a negative again, because this money was briefly in Fen's pocket when it finished in the account, and then she took it and deposited it into a new account. So that's also going to be negative. Also briefly want to make a quick note here. Um, if you imagine a hypothetical other world where Fen just sort of saved this money and didn't put it into this account at all, you would find that if she took the 700 and just saved it, she'd only have $63,000. So by investing it here, she's made about $42,000, which shows you the power of uh, interest when you can get it. Okay, back to this. Future value, we actually know that in this scenario and for this second account. She wants to be a millionaire, so she wants to end up at a million dollars, so the future value is going to be a million. Uh, periods is what we're going to leave blank because we're asked how old Finn is going to be when she reaches the million. So that's a time related question. So periods is always time. So we're going to leave that blank. That's what we need to know. Uh, we know our interest rate for the second account is 8%. We know our payment amount is zero. She's not putting in any new payments in the second account. She just deposited her original savings. Payments per year. I'm going to do a quick aside here. Um, for the WCLN calculator, when you don't make payments, logically you would think this would be zero. She's not making monthly payments anymore. But for the calculator to work properly, you have to actually put in a one. It may help to think of that as this one stands for the one lump sum that was put in. All I know is that if you put a zero here, the calculator won't work. So you can't ever have a zero for payments per year. Finally, compounding is straightforward. It's semi-annually. That means twice a year. So we're putting in a two there. When we hit the question mark for periods, we get 28.66. Now, this was yearly because our payments per year were set to one. So that is an amount of years. So if we want to know how old she was at the end, we're going to do one last little calculation here. Take her age of 33 when she moved the money from one account to the other and add the 28.66. 
If you convert 0.66 to months, remember you have to multiply by 12, not 10. So it's 61.66 years total, but if you want it in months, that would be 61 years and seven months is the age that Fen reaches her goal of being a millionaire.